Diego Maradona has been voted into the Goal Hall of Fame and no one match better encapsulates the Argentines' career than that 1986 World Cup quarter-final against England. Inity scored that infamous Hand of God goal before following it up with one of the greatest goals of all time, that wonderful individual effort. Lining up opposite Maradona in the England team that day was midfielder Steve Hodge. That royal blue shirt, number 10 on the back. It's become one of the most iconic shirts of all time. Maradona doesn't have it anymore, does he? It was obviously I was 23 and I thought I'd never, that was my World Cup. And I went to where he was and he was being mobbed by his teammates and there was cameras around him and everything. Uh, and I shook hands and we obviously said, you know, all the best, good luck. And I just thought, there's no point, it's just it's bedlam around him. Uh, and I walked away and left it. Um, then off the pitch, under the, the actual stadium where the actual changing rooms were, under the pitch. Um, and he'd come down one side of the, behind one of the goals and I'd come around the other side. And at the bottom, we just met again face to face. I missed that up there, I'll, I'll ask the question again. And he said, so he's literally five yards from where I am. I tugged on my shirt, he came straight across. I gave one of these, these things, thanks. Um, exchanged shirts and, and off he went and off I went. And it went to my attic for the next 16 years in a bag. It's a hot day, it's a bobbly pitch. It's been a pretty poor first half in fairness. It needed something to spark the game into life and it's fair to say that happened. Yeah, well, I mean, people would say to me, why did you flick it back like you did? And I remember him coming towards me on his little dribble and I, I got, well, there was about seven of us on the, on the edge of the penalty box. Um, and he popped the ball off to the, my left-hand side with Jorge Valdano. Um, but the ball went by him and went to my left-hand side and, I, and I, had a good, I was all left foot. I had, a, I had a good left foot, trustworthy, and I flicked it back to the keeper. And in those days, the keeper could come and catch the ball. And I just turned around and just saw a clash and he, they look, obviously Maradona had been there and played the ball to my left and gone in this strange direction, running towards the goalkeeper. I don't know why I did that, only he will know that. Uh, but obviously he ended up near the keeper. Uh, and I turned around as a clash and I just saw the ball going towards the net and just bobbling in. Um, so I say to people, look, now and again in sport, somebody will try something on and they'll get away with it. And you know, you hope that day isn't going to hurt your team that day. And on that day, unfortunately, he hurt us and he got away with it. And I, I wouldn't blame him. For, I've, not, I've never once blamed him for doing it. You know, because swing it round, the linker does it, and we're all happy. We're not happy. Well, we are here. We are happy. He's done it. It's wrong. It shouldn't happen. But in the heat of the moment, sometimes people make a decision to try something on and and get away with it. Well, if the first goal was was controversial and a blatant piece of cheating in the end, the second was something special. Yeah. Well, the first goal was just sneaky. Uh, he got away with the second one was. Well, I, I've been watching football for oh, probably 40, 40 odd years now. I, I've never seen a better goal, and uh, and my privilege was to be on the pitch when it actually happened, uh, if that's the right word to use. And I can remember being five yards behind him on the half line as he took off, and you see every World Cup because you see that goal over and over again. I'm five yards behind him, and there's Peter Beardsley and Peter Reid next to him. There's a little pirouette, and Scarpa's away, and I was five yards behind, I thought, I ain't going to catch him here, but I'll get back in my own good time. I'll just tuck in. And you know, you look ahead of you and you've got Reed, Beardsley chasing him, Butcher, Fennick, on the cover you've got Gary Stevens, the best keeper in the world at the time, Peter Shilton. So I'm thinking to myself, I'll just get in, because we'll, we'll be all right, we'll, we'll look after him, and at some point, you know, we'll get a shape back and we'll be okay. But once he's got into his stride, he went by a butcher and he's edging on the edge of the box. And then Fennec's there and he can't touch him. He's got a yellow card and he can't, he didn't touch him. And then he's in the box with his speed of thought and his speed of his feet. And then it's like, it's him and the keeper. And he's shaped to put the ball in the far corner and then come on the inside of the keeper. So Peter's gone the wrong way. And then you're thinking, well, at least butcher's leaning all over him. Like, you know, at least give him a bit of a nudge and put him off. But he was a strong man for his size as well. He was like a little tank and he just toe poked it in and I remember thinking, wow. Well, th that's what I was going to ask you about because sometimes it's not until after the event that people can appreciate or, or maybe dwell on, on these moments. But at that stage, did you know that you'd just gone two down to a, a sublime piece of artistry, one of the best goals ever scored? You knew straight away. Oh, yeah, I, I'd never seen anything like it. Not from, from your own half. You know, if you, if you give somebody a ball and said, 
with no opposition and said, run the ball that way at pace 60 yards on a bobbly pitch, I'll bet you sometimes they wouldn't get there because there'd be a bobble or a bad touch or something would happen. But to do it against a good England team, some good defenders on an awful pitch at pace in a World Cup, it was incredible. It really was. There's this, there's this term about a flawed genius and you know a lot of players um, have had that characteristic in their, in their lives of, of being genius footballers and then other things take over in their lives sometimes. Um, and obviously he's probably the most high profile one who's been a bit like that. But as a footballer, I just see the football side of someone like that. I've not seen, you know, I, I never saw Pele play live. I always think that could Pele have, you know, brought the Argentina team to a World Cup in 86 on his own. I'm not so sure about that. People will say I'm biased, but I don't, I don't think Pelé could have dribbled like he dribbled and carried a team like he carried that team to 86 and to 1990 to the final as well, and they were probably an, an even more average team in 1990. I think to carry two average teams to two finals is some, on his own more or less, is some, is some feat. Um, and I just think he was a, just a truly wonderful player. That it, For me, it was a privilege to be on the pitch twice with him in my career. Um, to say to your grandkids and, and your kids that, you know, see that fellow there, I played against him twice. I'll tell you what, he, he was brilliant.